Welcome to this tutorial about rendering our Razor components dynamically. With dynamically, I mean we are rendering them during the runtime of our application. So let's head straight into the index.razor component. Now to enhance the whole example a bit, I am going to define an input element, style it with the bootstrap clause form control, and also specify the column width to five. Now, whenever you define an input, of course, you want to bind its value somewhere. Therefore, I'm going to create a fully implemented property. The, the backing field will be named in camel case component. Uh, component name. And the property will be called component name without the lowercase to start with, but also in camel case. Now, I have defined a fully implemented property because I want that whenever we change the value, I want that our setter is invoked. Therefore, I'm defining the bind event to an input. If we wouldn't specify this here explicitly, this input element would need to lose focus so that we are actually setting the value after every keystroke. Otherwise, the value would just be set, yeah, as I told you, if the element is losing focus. So now the goal is that the user can input a search name, and if the component is found matching to the search name, then this component is going to be rendered. So somehow I have to have an overview of all the components in this solution. Therefore, I am defining a read-only property or a property with only a getter. Now, this property will be of type array with element type type. And to get all the components in this solution, I have to import the namespace system.reflection. And then I can go into assembly, get executing assembly, and then call the getTypes method. Now, if I would leave it as such, I would get returned all the types, of course, also types that are not actually components. So I'm just filtering them so that I'm only getting components back. Now I just say base type equals type of component base, because in this example, all the Razor components are inheriting directly from component base. Now, ver is a lynch extension method, and we know that working with lynch extension methods, we are always getting an I enumerable of t returned. So I can just call to array, which is also a lynch extension method. But because, yeah, not every lynch extension method is getting back an I enumerable, all the lynch methods that don't specify a, a type directly as to array or to list, but all the others like group by and, and select and ver are returning an I enumerable. So I hope uh, it is a bit clear and I didn't uh, bother you too much with this lynch thing. So now I also specify a field of type type and I call it selected type. For the moment, I'll just leave it as such. I'm not going to initialize it with a field initializer. Now I also define another field, render fragment. So a render fragment is actually a delegate type. And if we want to assign a method to it, the method has to have a render tree builder as a parameter type. And the method is not allowed to return anything. So, and we then can just by using the eraser syntax, add the render fragment here to our markup. So now somewhere, of course, I have to set this render fragment. I have to initialize it, assign it a value. This is going to happen here in the set. Now the selected type, how do I get the selected type? Here I have all the types, so all the razor component types I have in this array. Now I'm going to filter them. Here in this method, I'm getting a type as an input parameter, and then I'm just saying name to upper 
equals value to upper. Now where is returning an I enumerable, I only want the first element, so I just call first or default. Now this method, if it found if it finds uh, an element, then it's going to return the element, and if it doesn't find an element, then it is going to return null. And for these cases, I am using the null coalition operator. So if the left hand side is null, then I'm just going to set the type to survey prompt. And I can just use the type of operator. And then, of course, somewhere I have to actually assign a method to the render fragment. Now, in this case, I'm going to write a method in the Lambda syntax. As I've told you, we are getting a render tree builder, uh, yeah, an input parameter of type render tree builder. And then in here, we can call open component, pass it in zero because, yeah, that's like the starting index, and then pass it in our type, the selected type, and then we just have to close the component again. And then we should be all set to go. So let's have a look. Now we should start out with a white screen. No component found because we haven't set the property. Now if I set the property, we should see the survey prompt. OK, we see the survey prompt. Now I type out counter and we see our counter. Fetch data fetch data, and I can also type nav menu. Now the nav menu isn't styled. I think it has something to do with the CSS isolation that has been introduced in .NET 5. But you see that we can search for a component, and then the component is getting rendered dynamically. Thank you very much for your attention.